In the previous lesson, you learned how to factor trinomials when the leading coefficient was not one. And one of the strategies that you learned was to perform the AC method and then use grouping. So let me just remind you of some of those things real quick before I get into this next lesson. So let's say I've got the trinomial 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. I'm pretty sure this will factor if I'm thinking through it correctly. And so the way that you learned in the previous lesson was to multiply a and c. a times c is 6. So I want the two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5, and those two numbers are 2 and 3. Once you find those two numbers, remember you use those numbers to split apart the middle term. So I would get 2x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 3, like that. Splitting apart 5x into 2x plus 3x. Then here's where the grouping comes in. Group the first two terms, group the second two terms, and in the groups, you pull out your greatest common factors. So, in the first group, the greatest common factor is 2x. After you pull out 2x, you'd be left with x plus 1. Then in your second group, 3x plus 3, the greatest common factor would be 3. And you're left with x plus 1 also. We notice we have the same thing left inside the parentheses. So we take that, pull it out, x plus 1, and then we're left with 2x plus 3. Bingo. So grouping, again, is the step right here and right here, where you're pulling out, or well first, you group terms together and then you pull out greatest common factors. So what I'm going to be showing you today is just an extension of that idea. You're not going to see a whole lot that's different or new from the previous lesson, but the main difference that you're going to see is what your initial problem looks like. If you remember, a term are uh, numbers and variables that are separated by addition and subtraction. So this has one, two, three terms. Trinomial. Well, this first problem that I'm going to show you that's behind this box here, you see, has one, two, three, four terms, four things separated by addition and subtraction. You might also notice that we have more than one variable, and we don't have an x squared. So there are several things that are different about this. But the strategy that I'm going to use is very similar to the grouping strategy that I showed you in this previous problem. Here. Let me just clear that up. There we go. Okay, so let's get started. When you have four terms in your original problem, the first thing you want to do before you group is look for a greatest common factor. Remember, look at each term and see, can I divide? each of those terms by something. If you can, then you've got a greatest common factor. If I look, I cannot divide 6, 21, 10, and 35 by the same number. They also don't all have the same variable. Every single one of them would have to have an A, or every single one of them would have to have a B in order for me to pull out a variable. So no GCF, then I move to grouping. Group the first two terms together, group the second two terms together. Remember, in the, when you group the second two terms together and you've got a subtraction sign, remember to include that in the second group. Otherwise, it's going to throw off your answer. Once I group, then I just look for greatest common factors within the group. So the first one, 6AB minus 21A. We're just going to look at the numbers. 6 and negative 21. Greatest common factor between 6 and negative 21 is 3. Then I also look at my variables, a, b, and a. They have an a in common, so I can pull out a. 
If 3a is my common factor in this first group, what I would be left with is 2b, because 3 times 2 gives me 6. I need the a, so I've got the a in there, and then the b. So 3a times 2b would give me 6ab. And the next one, 3 times negative 7 gives me negative 21. And since I've got the a here in my factor outside the parentheses, I don't need it anymore inside the parentheses. So there's my first set. The second set, or the second group, looks like my greatest common factor. If I look at 10 and 35, I'll need to also think about this negative sign, is 5. If I pull out 5, I would be left with 2b, actually negative 2b at this point, plus 7. So remember in the previous lesson when I told you, you want what's inside these parentheses to be exactly the same. If I look at that, they're close, but not quite exactly the same. When this happens, when all that needs to happen is this for the signs to switch, so the negative and positive to switch, so that it matches the first one, what that means is that you need to pull out, in addition to a number, you need to pull out the negative. So instead of pulling out just 5, I will pull out negative 5, so I can turn that into positive 2b and negative 7. Now it's the same, so I can pull that 2b minus 7 out and 3a minus 5. And voila, it is factored. So we started with four terms. Right here, I went too far. So right here, we started with four terms. First thing we did is we looked for our greatest common factor. There was none, so the second step is we went to grouping. Grouped the first two terms together, pulled out a greatest common factor, pulled the second, or grouped the second two terms together, and then looked for a greatest common factor there. And hopefully if you do it right, what you should be left with is common inside the parentheses. You might need to do a little bit of thinking about positives and negatives to make that happen, but with these problems that you're going to be working on in this lesson, the practice problems and the quiz, they should be able to factor. So you should be able to make them work out. Okay, so that's one example. I'm going to do a couple more examples. Let's look at this one. Again, look to see if there's a greatest common factor. 5, negative 20, 3, and negative 12. I cannot divide all of those numbers by the same number. And if I look at my variables, I've got x cubed, x squared, x, and then nothing. If the last term had an x with it, then maybe I could pull out a greatest common factor. But since there's not an x with it, no greatest common factor in my numbers or my variables. So then, my next step is to group. So, first group greatest common factor of 5 and negative 20 is 5. I look at my variables, x cubed and x squared, greatest common factor would be x squared. So with what's left over, 5x squared times x would give me 5x cubed, and 5x squared times negative 4 would give me negative 20x squared. Then in the second set of parentheses, I've got 3x minus 12. The greatest common factor would be 3, and a positive 3, because if I pull that out, 3x times x gives me 3x, and 3x times negative 4 gives me negative 12. I have the same thing left over. Pull that out, and it's factored. Okay, so, so far not too bad. We haven't had a greatest common factor to pull out first. I'm going to do an example where you do have to do that. But it's really very similar to what you saw in the previous lesson as one of the methods. Now, of course, you may have cho chosen to use the box method as your factoring method, which is totally fine. But box method is also grouping. It's just 
organized in a box instead of just straight out on the paper. Okay, let's see. I might skip this next example. Hmm. Hmm. None of these have a greatest common factor. Oh gosh darn, I thought I had one on here that had a greatest common factor. Let's see, let me pause the video and I'm going to, oh, well, I'm going to pause the video, it won't make a difference for you, and I'm going to come up with one that's that's got a greatest common factor. All right, so I came up with one that's got a greatest common factor and should factor out. So here, if I look at my numbers, 6, negative 6, 8, and negative 2, they could all be divided by 2. So that's part of what I can pull out. But then if I look, I also have each of them with an x. Now, as a greatest common factor, I can only pull out the smallest amount, which in this case is x. So 2x will be my greatest common factor. Then I see what I've got left after I pull out 2x. That would be 3x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x. Now the last one, you might try and overthink it, but it's, too, it's super easy. If I take 2x out of 2x, it's not that I have nothing left over, I have 1, or minus 1 in this case. Because if I wanted to multiply out to get the original problem, I would need to multiply by something to get this negative 2x. So if I did this last one, 2x times negative 1, that gets me negative 2x. Okay. Oops. So my first step by pulling out the greatest common factor. Then my next step is to group. So I'm going to have an inner set of parentheses. I'm going to group the first two together and the last two. In the first group, my greatest common factor would be 3x squared. And I would have x minus 1 left. What did I do? Oh darn. I did something wrong here. Because it doesn't factor. What did I do wrong? Hmm, I did something wrong. Well, okay. So let's just pretend that this was the actual what the actual problem was supposed to be. So this actually I might be able to turn this into a good thing. Okay. So if this was the original problem and I went to the second group, but here's what what I realized. I can't pull anything out of 4x minus 1. So I mean I could pull out 1, I guess. But then I'd be left with 4x minus 1, which is not the same as the first set of parentheses. So if that does happen, which it could, it certainly could, then your answer is just pulling out the greatest common factor, and then what's left is what's left. Okay, well, I tried to come up with one that factored, and I did. It's just that when I typed it up, I must have not typed it up correctly from what I had on my paper. So. Hopefully, I know, maybe I'll have to do another example where there's a greatest common factor. Let's make one. All right, let's say I turn this one into um, 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 8x minus 24. What I just did to that is I multiplied each of the terms by 4. So let's just say I turned that into 4x cubed minus 12x plus 8x minus 24. They're not equal, I just multiplied it by 4 to get a new problem. So then here, if I wanted to factor it, I would have to take that 4 back out. This is again just to show you what you have to do when you've got a greatest common factor to pull out first. So I pulled out 4, then I group, 
first group, greatest common factor is x squared. Set this to a little bit x cubed. Making all kinds of silly mistakes. So pull out x squared, and what I've got is x minus 3 left over. And in the second set of parentheses, greatest common factor is 2, and I'm left with x minus 3. Okay. So here, I do have the same thing left inside the parentheses. Pull that out in front. Not in front of the 4. The 4 is what goes first. Then I put x minus 3. And then x squared plus 2. And that's my answer. Okay? So, I came, I tried to real quick come up with a problem by multiplying a problem each term by 4. And then when I pulled out the 4, I made a little mistake here. Going from 4x cubed here in this first part. I wasn't paying attention. I did not pull out an x, I just pulled out 4, so that needed to stay x cubed. So you pull out your greatest common factor, and then you group. So that's factoring by grouping when you've got four terms. Again, if this video doesn't get you what you need and you're practicing problems, ask your teacher and we'll get you the help that you need.